Vancouver Carpenter. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to um, finish the corners with a mud tube, a mud tube and an applicator, and a flusher. So if you watched the other video, I've already taped this with the roller and the flusher. So that was a two and a half inch flusher. This is the three and a half inch flusher. I think it's a Can-Am one. And um, the first thing that I like to do before I get started on this is I like to sand the corners really quick. And some people might think that that's a waste of time, but you know, it just really helps clean it up, especially if you, you know, left something like this up in this corner right here. So something like that is obviously not going to coat well, but just in general, what we're doing is knocking all the little boogers and clumps off the walls so that when you go in a run that flusher down the wall, it's not picking up chunks of crud and it's also going over onto a smoother surface. So in my opinion, it's time well spent and makes a big difference in the finished product. So right here, I have just some real coarse 100 grit sandpaper on a nice flat, firm sanding pole. And um, it's not a big procedure, it's not a lot of sanding, we're just gonna do a quick run through the room on both sides here. And yeah, I can reach it. It's a bit of a stretch, but I don't think I need to get the stilts on for that because it is really such a quick light sanding. Start in the top. Just this much. I'm gonna run around the whole perimeter of the room. This one needed a bit more. Sprinkler. Here's another spot that could totally use it. Something like this. See that hard edge we got right there? It's easier to sand that right here, right now, and have that unfeathered edge later. So it really is that quick. I'm now going to do the underside. And at this point, I don't need to worry about pushing hard into the corner. Like if I ding up the corner, if I ding up the corner, it's going to be okay. That's it. So now these corners are all ready to be finished. So actually what I'm going to do first though, but not on camera, is I'm going to coat all the way around here with um, concrete fill because you can see there's all this damage on the wall from a chair rail and a crown molding. So I want to get all that dealt with before I actually coat it. So when we come back you're going to see that the wall looks more white. That's why. Well I am finally ready to start on the corners again. Um, we'll get into this bucket of mud. It hasn't been open for a couple weeks. Oh, it's not too bad, just a little bit. So first thing is the consistency that you want to have for corners. And that is loose. Like this is definitely going to be too thick. Let's see what it looks like when we give it a quick spin. So this is Looks like the last time I used it was for skimming. So it's pretty wet, but nowhere near how we want it yet. So we're gonna add a fair bit of water to this. I don't know how much it is. It's more about what it does after we mix it. We're looking for that big nuclear explosion in the bucket. That's what we want for corner coating mud. We're not quite there, believe it or not. It really makes the difference between how easy it is to flush those corners out. Mm. 
I'm not seeing that sploosh, but you know, you can see how wet that is. Like, you see it runny? That's good. So we didn't get the satisfying sploosh, but it's good enough. Okay, so what do we have here? I have a, I think this is a better than ever, yeah, better than ever corner applicator. So it's like a little, little kid's choo-choo train. But you can see from the shape of it, it's gonna leave a little one inch bead of mud all across there. It's gonna leave a bit in the exact corner as well. So um, another thing I didn't get into is when to do this. So I do this before my first coat. So it's all taped and I haven't started coating anything. And the reason I do this before my first coat is when I come back to do my final coat, if there's any extra work that needs to be done in the corners, I can do it tomorrow. Whereas if I did my corners, my angles on my second coat, I wouldn't have that extra day to tune stuff up. So that's important to me is when I like to do it. Um, anyways, yeah, I just dunked this guy in here. Sometimes it makes some pretty uh, interesting sounds, but not, not this time. Just get that extra mud off of here. And it's been a bit, so. I might be a little rusty here and I've only got one room to prove my stuff. Um, but the basic principle behind this is like, you kind of think of it as like an accordion. So what I mean is when you're pushing it, so if you're pushing into the ceiling, like if you're pushing in and you're pushing on this arm, there's gonna be a lot of drag. It's not gonna move nicely. So when you run around this room, you kind of have to pull with this arm and push with this arm. So like an accordion. So, and um, the amount of mud that you get in here is critical because if you get too much, it drips all down the wall. If you don't do enough, it doesn't feather the edges. So hopefully I can get it just right in the one pass that I'm gonna do around this room. And we'll get to see how quickly you can do um, all the corners in a room like this. Well, this is just the ceiling, but still. This is nine foot tall ceilings. I can quite easily do this from just standing here. Okay. There's that sound. <laughs> so right here you can see it's not bad. It's probably a little thin. Right there is kind of just what you want. And down at the end is way too much. Not what you want at all. So I think I'm gonna need just a little bit more right here. And actually, I almost feel like I have my mud a bit thick because of how hard I was having to work there. So before I do the whole room, before I do the whole room, let's flush this out and see how it looks. Because I'd rather get it a little thinner. I should be able to run around the room faster than that, which is what makes me think it's a bit thick. We get this extended. This is the three and a half inch one. I taped it with the two and a half. This is the three and a half. And just start here. So here's another critical thing. What you're looking at is you're looking at the bend in this thing. So the reason it has that bend is you wanna try and visualize that it's going right into the corner at 45 degrees. So if you're down here like this, it's gonna be making your corner out of square. If you're up like this, well, it's just gonna be kinda of hard. So you kinda of wanna imagine that that's in there at 45 degrees, just like that. And it's just run down the wall. So that didn't work out too nicely at all yet. And I think, well, sometimes when the corner is not very square, it doesn't work out that nice. Also, it usually needs a push down the wall to get this full of mud. So um, that first little bit where I had a lot of mud wasn't the end of the world, but it's dragging a lot on this concrete fill I've got on the ceiling. So it's not like fresh drywall. I got a lot of drag here. So I'm actually pretty darn happy with that second pass. You can see that's nice and feathered. Um, that's actually a perfect corner. So I'm happy with that, but I had to push a little bit hard. So the mud was still a bit too thick. We are going to add just a bit more water to this mud. We're gonna try and get that nuclear explosion and see um, if that makes a difference to the speed that I can run around this room on.
Where is it? Well, I'm just gonna keep going. Nope. It might just be because this bucket of mud is only half full. But that is runny now. And what we're using is all-purpose, lightweight, all-purpose mud. Oh yeah, that's easy. There we go. And if you're worried that it's too much water, I mean, a lot of the water gets pulled out of this as it's sitting on the wall, waiting for you to come back and get to it. Finally got it just right. This one upright right here. Way too much on that. That's gonna be a massive mess. Let's see if we can get one just looking right. You know, whenever I haven't done this for a while, it always takes me a bit to get the feel for it. And, um, you know, on a job like this, by the time I get the feel for it, I'm already done the corners. <laughs> After already puking mud halfway down the wall. So it's definitely something that takes some practice. Like, don't expect it to go perfectly on your first attempt. Hopefully you have, you know, a bigger job to do it on. Anyways. Alright. Now, let's run around this room, huh? So this one's got a lot, but that's good for starting this thing again. Not bad. I'm not worried about that little bit on the edge there. When the mud is this thin, it sands really easy. Oh, it's so out of square. You know what? I almost need to use my three inch in here. Let's try that again. It's also fairly hard when the ceilings are tall. But that's better. Just it can take a few passes to get it just where you want it. Especially when you're not doing it every day or when there's tall ceilings, but it still beats coating them by hand. Alright, I'm almost there. It's almost looking like I want it to. There we go. That's good. That one was almost good first go. You can see it can get messy. Okay, that's usually how it is. Two passes and it's good. I don't find that it's always good enough in one pass. I find the second pass and occasionally the third is what will really dial it in and get that feathered edge. So this one where I put way too much, you can see it's just way too much up there. Well, I am gonna start 
Actually, the first thing I do is maybe flatten it down just a little bit. But if I take this all the way to the bottom, I'm gonna make a massive mess. Like a six inch puddle at the bottom there. I'm turning my handle around so that I can put pressure the right way. So that's not bad. One more pass. I'm gonna lose a bit of this mud here on something that can afford to have some mud on it. Okay, let's do one more pass up to the top. There, I can live with that. Look at that, hey? What do we do about that? Well, we'll get there. Don't you worry. That's good enough. Whoop. So it takes a little practice, but you can get to the point. You get your mud consistency dialed in, you get your system dialed in, you can get to the point that you're just running down these one or maybe two times. Um, I am not gonna be able to demonstrate that though on film. See, there's two, it's good. You know, I'd love to be able to show off and run around the room once, but I don't have that for you today. But, it's looking all right. Like I said though, there's some challenges here. We've got these corners built out with confill on the bottom, which is making it drag. It's generally not work as nicely. But overall, again, I think anyone in their right mind will say that this beats hand taping any day of the week. Like, I can't coat handles faster than this by hand. And I don't know too many people that would claim to. So for the cost of these tools, they are actually a really good investment if you plan to do any substantial amount of drywall finishing at all. Whether you're a homeowner, or a contractor, carpenter, or a full-time drywaller, I do think that these tools are money well spent. So if you don't believe me, go do all the angles in a house by hand. All right, so now that we've done that, oh, hey there. <laughs> now that we've done that, what do we do about those awful messes in the corner? Well, let's take care of that. So I'm going to take my five inch knife. So do you guys remember I did my first coat with a uh, four inch knife. I taped this whole place with a four inch knife and I wiped down the right hand side on all the intersections. So now we are gonna go here with the five inch knife. And I like this method because you don't have to think too much. Thinking and drywalling, they don't, they don't really go hand in hand. You wanna get these things automatic. So again, we are going to the left hand side of every one of these. Left hand, left hand, left hand. And it's not beautiful, it's not perfect, but you know what? It's good enough. Again, we wanna do this fast, we don't wanna think about it too much. So we did the left hand side on each one. Um, I'll explain that a little bit better on the next one so you guys understand. And you know, go around, and look for stuff like this. Obviously you can't leave that. That's gonna be way too much sanding. If you really wanna tune it up, you can put a little extra mud on there. And then, whatever, sanding can take care of that. Okay, we got this right here. It's a bit messy. It's even got a bit of loose tape in there. Let's just get that kind of in place. So this one's gonna need a bit of extra mud. Let's grab some. Sure, I probably could have found some on the floor. All right, let's go to the left-hand side. So what we are looking at is like this is an intersection. So we are going to the left-hand side, like as if we're driving into the left-hand side. So left-hand side, left-hand side. I suppose backing out of the left-hand side is a better way to think of it. So on my first coat, I did the right-hand side with the four-inch knife. We're now doing the left-hand side with the five-inch knife. And yeah, there's a line there. You know what? I could spend my energy trying to get rid of that or I could just move on. Okay, 
what do we got here? Oh, there's a beauty. Maybe you want to be on this side. That's, look at that. That's a beauty. Okay, left hand side. Obviously we need to take that right down. Now this is not the last time that I am going to be hitting the corners. So if they're not perfect, I am not worried about it. So that's actually looking pretty good. I will be doing one more pass on these corners when I'm coating this place on my final coat. Not on the corners, but in the three ways. So again, this is just the start of my system to making these look pretty good pretty quickly without having to think too much. Okay, we can tune that up. I'm not gonna worry about the rest of it because when I come and coat this butt joint, this is all gonna look prettier. Bit of work we may as well do all in here. I'm just flattening this stuff out because by the time I get to this butt joint it might be hard and then I would have to build it down too far. I mean or sand it but the last thing I'm going to do is go get a sanding pad and come back and do that. Oh, a couple drops. Oh we got a couple another wet ones here. And this must have been from when I was slapping that wet tape on the wall. Okay. Left hand side. Left hand side. Left hand side. So I'm gonna, nope. I tried to fuss with that line and I made it worse. And that's why I don't usually fuss with the lines. Alright. Left hand side. Left hand side. And if it needs more mud, put the mud in there while you're doing this. You got mud on your knife, put the mud on there. Okay. Left hand side. Left hand side. Okay, it's good enough. And did I get that one? Yeah, that was the one I started with. So that is how you tape corners with um, whatever the heck this thing is. A tube and flushers. So, um, not how you take corners, but how you coat corners. Uh, I've been doing it like that for a while now. Like I said, I'm a little bit rusty, but that's the whole general idea. And instead of showing you guys the last thing, what I do is when I go to coat the three ways for the last final touch up, I then grab a six inch knife instead of a five inch. So I take the six inch knife and I quickly coat the right hand side of every one of those intersections. So what that does, in the long run is that you have alternated three times. So you start on the right hand side and then you go to the left hand side and then the right hand side. That's three times in those corners. It's not actually that much work. And what that does is every time you alternate the sides, it fills in the line and the groove that was left there from the last time. So by the time you've done that three times, you have a beautiful three-way corner. So that's how I've been doing it for quite a while. Uh, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Again, this is how to coat your corners with a tube and a flusher. All the tools linked in the description below if I can find them. This uh, carpentry drywaller is getting tired. It's time to get on to the next thing. Thanks for watching you guys. Till the next one.